All right, Victor, what time is it? Uh, it is exactly 4.56 a.m. I'm nice and shaved, ready. We woke up at 4 a.m. We're going all the way to Austin right now. We're in Dallas. We're actually in Frisco, Texas. This is what we do for you guys. Three hours and 20 minutes drive, hopefully with no traffic. So most like four hours there and four hours back. Then we're gonna film another thing. So anyhow, we do this for you. We'll see you guys soon. All right, guys, welcome back to our channel. We're still here in Texas. We just finished Rifa Palooza yesterday and we came to check out this tank in Austin. Uh, his name is Peter, Bay Area Reefer, for those of you that don't know him. We're super excited. He's got this beautiful tank. It's a mixed tank. He's got some Acroporas. He's got a bunch, bunch of mushrooms, hammers everywhere. We're super excited. We're gonna go check it out. We drove early this morning. We got up at 4 a.m. to come do this for you. So anyway, let's talk. Let's go check it out. Let's go inside. Hi, right, Peter, what's up, buddy? How's it going, Vic? Good, Thanks man. for coming. Thank you for having us over, man. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, we're super excited. So. Let's start the questions again. Like you got this beautiful tank. First question, how long has this mixed reef been set up? Uh, so I moved here around 2020, so right. it's, it's about three years old. And yeah. how long you been in the hobby? I've been in the hobby for 26 years. 26 years? Yeah. And where did you move from? I moved from uh, San Francisco, Bay Area. San Francisco. Yeah. So that's why my name is Bay Area Reef, so I, I never gonna changed say, it. Yeah. So there's a lot of hardcore reefers over there. Yeah, yeah. In the Bay Area, you know? Don't forget guys, throughout this video, we're hiding an Easter egg of Casper somewhere. I won't tell you where it's at. First two people to find it. And post the comments below, we're gonna send you a swag pack right to your door, as long as you're within the 48 states. Who made this tank? So this is the Innovative Marine 200-gallon uh, tank. 200-gallon yep. tank? You had a tank for 25 years before you said you've been in the hobby? I've been on and off with a bunch of tanks. Like, uh, What I, was your last tank before this one? It was a Red Sea 350 before this tank. Red Sea 350. Yeah. And how long that one ran for? That one ran for a good five years. Five years? Yeah, and then before that, I had a bunch of nano tanks. And then before that, it was college, so I didn't have a tank. Uh, there was a little gap. But, gotcha. like, but growing up, I had like 75 gallon bow fronts, you know, like cylindrical tanks, you name them. I had, we all I, did. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing it for roughly the same amount of time that you've been doing yeah. it. I started in 1999, you know? Yep, around there. So let's talk a little bit about your corals here. So this is a true mixed reef with SPS all over on top. Yep. So one of the first things that caught my eye is this little scully island that you have here. But what's more impressive is these two front scullies here. They are so different. And the first thing I said, where do you get this? He goes, I got those like seven years ago. And when I said seven years ago, Scullies weren't worth that much seven years ago. Yeah. They were going anywhere from 600 to $1,200. Yeah, roughly, price, roughly like 800. Whatever. Now they're worth anywhere between 1200 to $2,000, $3,000, depending on how nice they are. Yep. They come a long way. So you got also some um, Wellsophilias right here. Yep. And how long have you had these? These ones are pretty new. I probably had these about six or seven months. At They're this not point. that easy to keep on the very beginning. They're they can not. be pretty finicky. They're yeah. Not... Their indicators for me are like nutrient levels. Like if they're kind of shriveled up, it's kind of an indicator of me if something's wrong with the tank. So yeah, it's like actually that's like an happy. indicator coral to me. Yeah. So I gotta interrupt you. Look who got here. <laughs> hi, now you wanna be on video? You wanna say hi? We've been trying to get her on video for the past 20 minutes and she didn't want to. Now you came on your own, so it needed to be on her terms. Her name is Coco? This is Coco. Little She's Coco a seven-year-old Westie. Aww, can I get kisses? Aww, Aww, I got a kiss now. So you got a hammer island here. Yep. Did you start it with that many hammers or it was like a couple single heads here and there? Uh, so it was only a couple single heads, like three or four heads of each kind of colony. And then this has dramatically changed over the years, right? When I first started, this was all LPS. There was no acros in here. So the hammer garden extended over like half of the tank. So they grow so fast. They go fast. Something about branching hammers in the past five years, I don't know what we did or what kind of a lineage we found on this course, but they're just growing and growing and growing. Some of these orange hammers, they just don't stop growing. Yeah, and I, I have all branching hammers. I'm, I don't have very good luck with wall hammers for some reason. They'll, they're tougher. Yeah. They're yeah. a lot tougher. I mean, uh, just, I'll, I'll have them for like one or two years and they'll do fine. And then one day they'll just... They just decide just, to peel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe the branching part. Sometimes you get a branching hammer, you can have 50 heads and two of them that you peel. Yeah, yeah. So that's the difference. It's yeah. not connected to the other ones. That's true. It's its own body, you know? Mm -hmm. So then you got a bunch of torches here. Yeah. I can't help it but to see that Holy Grail looking torch. You see the tips on that thing? Yeah, but they're like thin in the back and they're really different on the front. That's so cool, man. And it's always been that way. It's I weird. wonder if maybe it's part because the way he's making contact with this one in the front. I don't know, but it's cool. Yeah. Super different. 
and you're into meat calls as well. I see you got what, four of them? Uh, there's four acanthos there. And there's one glitter one hiding in the back there. It, it, it acted like a parachute being up front with the flow gotcha. and it, it like floated away. So one thing I keep on noticing is all these little tube worms that are everywhere. These feather dusters, man, they, they proliferate everywhere. And I, so I they came it. on their own? They came on, I will leave they them came alone. on I think a, it looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes <laughs> uh, I'll have to come in here and manually remove them sometimes because they'll they'll take over like an entire rock. Yeah. Can I pick her up? Oh, absolutely. Come here. <laughs> oh, Coco, what a baby. I'm doing baby with Coco here. Is that what you wanted? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but I can feel you too. So anyhow, the two borns back there, they're beautiful. Uh, you, they bother you, huh? They get too crazy? They're okay like on the rock like that, but sometimes you'll see they'll, they'll sprout in the middle of the zone. And they start looking like it's dirty. Yeah, almost. yeah. So I I'll, noticed that. Yeah, I'll come in with tweezers and I'll, I'll pluck them. Wow, I have never, guys, I have never seen someone with so many of these um, feather, feather, feather dusters. dusters. They're not even yeah. tumors, they're feather yeah. dusters. But they're beautiful. But it, but I can see what he's saying. When they're like on their own on the rock, they look natural. Yeah. But when they start popping in between your zoantes, the zoantes, they look like something's wrong with them. Like like if something floated and that got caught in there, so. At quick glance, it almost looks like Aptasia, sort of, like from a distance. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously I can tell that it wasn't, but anyhow, I can see how how it becomes like a nuisance, you know? Yeah. I always tell this to people, guys. I always say this. It can be something good in your tank, mm -hmm. but if you don't introduce and start taking over, it's no good. Yeah. Anything that take over too fast, it can be sponges. Yep. It can be tunicates. Yeah. It can be feather dusters. Whatever you might think is nice, it can be a specific zoante or a specific anemone, but if they're taking over too, too fast, it can become a major problem. You got some Grafton Montipora back there? So, yep, yeah, that's the... That's the OG. That's right? the OG one, the WFC one. You know what's funny? That is specific OG grafted cap. Yeah. The green, sometimes it's not the, the bright. Mm. It's, it's kind of finicky to that. I got a new one that we've been working on for a while. We call it the Jawbreaker cap. Yeah. It's yellow with red. Oh, nice. And the yellow is so much more intense. You should get a frag of that. It's yeah, pretty crazy. I've seen one where the green is like almost like yellow. a neon yellow. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. That's the Jawbreaker. That's what we call it, the jawbreaker, because it looks like a jawbreaker mushroom, you know, because it's so That's bright awesome. and yellow. That's pretty cool. Is that a right there? Is that from Jason? That's the JF Jolt. Jolt, yeah, yes. Jason Fox yeah. Jolt. I recognize it. It's so cool when you see an acropora and you can recognize it. Yeah. So, acropora is like, a lot of people think they're hard to recognize, but when acropora has been around in the hobby for a while, and you have it, you can spot them a mile away. Yeah. That's what I say. Is that the Jason Fox Jolt right there? It's unique with the blue and the pink tips. Gotcha. You got this giant goniopora here. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. So this is your little goni island here? Yeah, that's the goni. That's the, the, my wife loves those gonies, so. Gotcha. They, they stay. <laughs> and what do you got here, an elegance? That is a yellow tip elegance. Yellow tip elegance, how long have you had it? That one is for about four years old. I brought that one from California when I, when I moved here. Gotcha. Um, contraband grafted DJ yes. there? That thing grows and grows oh, and grows, man. right? That thing, <laughs> it, it doesn't stop. Fast. It doesn't stop. I'm scared that it's gonna proliferate and touch everything. <laughs> So that covers the course. So let's talk a little bit about your fish, man. Break them down for me. Yeah, so I got a bunch of wrasses in here. Um, pintail there, lineatus right there. Uh, a couple of them are hiding right here. Uh, How long have you had the lineatus? That one is a th right when I built this tank. I, that was one of the first fish in here. So he's about yeah. three years old. Yeah. And you have a ruby red dragon head back there? I do, and there's a regular mandarin in here too. There's a bunch of tangs that are hiding right now, but so I have this wrasse, which is beautiful. What do you call it? I think that's a ruby red. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. And, beautiful, it, and it, when beautiful. it when it's it's a flasher rest, when it flares up, you'll see all the pink on its fins. It's really yeah. beautiful. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I love it. Uh, I'm glad it's coming out. So we I can see, see a gem tank back there somewhere. There's a I'm gem tank. There's hiding. a gem tank right there in the back rock. There's you got a, a hybrid scopus right yeah, there. Yeah, hybrid scopus koi tank. Okay. And then there's a yellow. Yellow, yellow tank back okay. there. Is that your three tanks only? Those are the only the only tanks in there. One more I used to have a hippo tang in here, but it started nipping on all of the meat coral. Yeah, do you wow. feed them algae every day? I do. I, I yeah. do the nori clip. I do your trick. Where what I, a difference, right? It, it, it stays on the clip so it doesn't float everywhere. But yeah, and hurt. a lot of people, they feed algae, and Come the problem on. is, a lot of people feed algae, and the problem is, once they, they, they make it loose, it wow. doesn't last, and okay. then it goes shredding everywhere, you know? Yeah. Come here. Come here, you want to come back again? Come on. Oh. She wants in on the video again. Yeah, she wants to be back. What do you want to say to the camera? You want to talk to him real quick? 
say, oh, the doggies. You guys don't come in front of the camera like me. I'm cuter. <laughs> Fish, we were in fish, right? Yep, so the Starry Blennies right there came out. This is a Tierra. Those are the best. I love, they have so much uh, People character. People understand me, those fish, they're, even though they don't have a lot of color to me, even the way they look, the way they move, their personality, like you say, you see that like, they're just chicken the reef and then you sit on a rock yeah. and they just move around. Sometimes I'll have frag racks in here when I'm acclimating corals. And, and just, you're just it, resting you're there. just resting there. Chilling. That's what I'm saying, I like them. And then the other one that does similar stuff like that is the uh, Flame Hawk. Yes. I have a long nose flame hawk in here. Yeah. And he does very similar things. He's he got a good personality, kind of like that. Very cool. The flame hawk to me trips me out because you see him and literally he just sits on the rug. He's like. Yeah, because their swim bladders are not uh, there, yeah, right? And they're moving their eyes. Like, literally, you're like, <laughs> are you looking at me? They come and they're like, kind of like, oh, what's up? They say hi to you, you know? I also have a really fat barbonious antheus in here there oh he is. lord right that is huge how long mm. have you had that that one is about uh two years old i was yeah. gonna say i'm jealous now yeah i got him as a little like quarter size barbonious but he's it's one of my whenever favorites. the auto feeder comes turns on and when the food he's first one there change. and he's mean he's i remember the first time that i saw a barbonious antheus i fell in love yeah because my favorite fish is a sunburst antheus nice and they're finicky, you know? And when I saw that one, this, if you ask me, I think these are harder than Borbonias. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, than a yeah. regular Sunburst. Yeah, this is probably my second one. The first yeah. one didn't make it, yeah. They're, 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 they're fairly tough, you know? But uh, yeah, man, I mean, your fish will look immaculate. Your corals are super happy. Are we missing any fish or we cover them all? I have a Royal Grama. Royal Grama? This is his cave right here. I love them too. They're, guys, you don't have to buy the most expensive fish. Yeah. That fish to me, it's a very affordable fish. It's, Bright purple, bright yellow, it's, it's easy to keep, doesn't bother nobody, you know? I mean... It's a great fish. It's, it's iconic to the reefing kind of hobby, right? The I little, love little it. Grandma. I can't get enough of it. So since we're talking about your fishing course, what is your feeding schedule look like? What do you feed? When do you do it? So I have everything, a lot of the stuff in this tank is automated. So from the feeder, from auto water chain, we'll get into that. But okay. I have uh, TDO pellets and uh, nori flakes. In this flakes. feeder, and the cool thing about this is that you can put different size foods in this feeder, because a traditional feeder that's like a drum and it just rotates and drops out, all the food drops out. Mm -hmm. This one you can put different sizes of food in there. And who makes that? A vast marine. Uh, a vast marine makes that one. Cool. I have feeding, to check it out. I never. It heard turns of that. on. It feeds three times a day for about. It turns a, a minute each time it turns on. So gotcha. at. Uh, Noon, three, and six o'clock is when I feed the the auto feeder, and then for the tangs and sometimes the wrasses, they love nori. Like most of the fishes in here actually love. Yeah, nori. I've seen clownfish picking on nori. Yeah, and the wrasses. Uh, I have a yellow chorus wrass in here that just tears it up. Oh, so there's a yellow. Yeah. Oh, there's the the. Oh, the flame. Uh, the, the, the long nose. nose. There he oh, is. Oh, he's happy. Look how fat he is. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah. you want more action, huh? Yeah, and then I have a pair of these clowns, and this is really cool. Oh, so I there's more fish, guys. We thought we'd seen it all. Yeah, so this clown is special because it has the letter P on its <laughs> tail, and it's very From distinct. Peter, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then I do uh, frozen mices, like P-E mices, frozen. And then for <laughs> at right. night... Now you're gonna stop. At night, I feed the uh, reef nutrition foods. So like um, the Fido Feast, and then the row, the little, like the little eggs. So you say Fido Feast. Fido Feast, row, row and then I put um, the oyster feast in here. So we're doing very similar. You do yeah. iodine, amino acids, anything like that? So I do. Uh, I, I do a kind of a hybrid approach where I'm doing um, moonshiner trace elements, but I'm not doing the full spectrum of them. I'm using Brightwell Aquatics Replenish and okay. Coral Color as my primary traces. Coral Color from Brightwell? From Brightwell. Okay. And so I'll dose that and I'll run an ICP uh, every month to see what traces I'm kind of low on and then I will supplement whatever is low with uh, specific trace elements so that like manganese, iodide, um, there's a bunch of uh, little blue bottles, dropper bottles in here that I um, dose on the daily basis. Okay, like, what is that again? So it's magnesium, ma manganese, cobalt, chrome, iron, vanadium, iodine, and uh, this thing called uh, liquid mud, which he doesn't have. A and who makes those? This is uh, Reef Moonshiners. Oh, you're, you're using the moonshine method. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long you been doing that for? Uh, two years. Two years? Yeah, and okay. ever since I started, everything's just, Crazy growth. Everything's super happy. Yeah. 
Okay, can we talk about some of your maintenance routine and water changes and stuff like that? Yeah, so this system is, when I first started it, I had it plumbed up into the attic. So there, there's piping that goes to the attic to do like really quick manual water changes. But over time, I decided to do an auto water change uh, setup. So this uh, system is uh, ran on Apex and I have a dose out in the garage in the mixing station that does okay. auto water change. So how often do they, they happen then? Uh, auto water change is four gallons a day. With the auto water change system, it's just very consistent. It replenishes traces a little bit. I use the Brightwell Neomarine salt, which is which is a really good salt. Yeah, we've been using the salt for a long time yeah. too. That's what I use on my tank. I'm very happy with it. If my voice is a little funny, I was just talking too much Arifa Palooza, guys. It was a busy <laughs> weekend. Okay, so that's the water changes. Um, can we talk about some of your equipment that you choose? Yeah, so for, for lights, lighting, I have the three A500X Kessels okay. pendant lights, and they look a little dirty because they have these 3D printed shades on them. Okay, uh, I like it, very creative. So it doesn't uh, blind you when you're when you're viewing the tank. Okay, and then and blades, those are blades? I have there? AI blades, these are, the inner ones are the AI blade grows, and the outer ones are the glows. Okay. And so uh, I swap these out for my reef brights, and ever since I swapped them out, it just, has this blanket of light that's just very smooth and even even the air blade blades by themselves have kind of like the Kessel shimmer. That's all I'm using on my tank in my office. Yeah. I got three blades, it's an yeah. 80 gallon. Matter of fact, I need a fourth one right now because mm -hmm. uh, I got them cranked all the way up and I need a little extra light. I can only get a max of like 220 power at the top of the tank. Yeah, but they can be used as primary lights too. I, I'm I using them as primary. Yeah, yeah. I've been totally fine with them. I have no issues with them. I love them. They're they're, they're great lights and they look very sleek. I like I how they look. Um, and how long have you been using them now? So I got these uh, about three months ago. Three and months I, ago. And I replaced my Reef Bright bars with them. Okay, so that takes care of the line. And then for floor, I see you got four MP40s? Four MP40s and then just the two return nozzles. Uh, Those that, are two that, return that, nozzles. That's all I have in there. And I have the flow, random flow generators from... Uh, oh, the nozzles? Yeah, the nozzles. Gotcha. Yeah. There's plenty of flow. I mean, as you can see right here, if anything, I think it's too much flow. You see all these guys? Like, yeah, yeah. So these, these down here. So the mixed reef is kind of like a is a, ba is a battle between flow light. It's never easy, right? <laughs> yeah. Especially when you got fine sand like this. Mm -hmm. And it's blow like um, before you see it, it's blow. It's already seeing the. Yeah, bottom, that's what I'm bottom. saying. I can yeah. tell that it's a little too much flow. Even right around here, I can see how the meat coral. Like you see how it's going on there? Yep. The sand instead, just of, instead of spreading out like a skirt, it used to spread out really well before the the acros got in here. But I gotta meet in the middle somewhere. Got you. So can we look at some of your filtration? Yeah, uh, so one more thing on the lights. So I installed these, uh, these lights are actually on electric legs. So they actually go up and down. So when, oh, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm maintaining the tank, I can uh, bring the lights up and wow. down. Wow. So before when this whole aquascape was being put in, it was too big to kind of fit and it would bang on the light so I would lift it up to the ceiling. That's the first that I've ever seen this yeah. guy. That's new to me. Yeah, so these are just regular, uh, you know, like a stand-up office desk. Yeah. So I took the legs, the motors from there, inverted them and then installed these 80-20 bars in it and it now is a liftable light rack. You're creative, yeah. that's good, man. <laughs> I like it. That's what I said, that's the first time I see that. That's very, very cool, man. And since you're already talking about that, I'm officially putting you in the Meticulous Club. I don't even need to see your sump, but I can tell your whole room and everything. Is your sump here or some on the other side? Uh, so it's most of the Apex gear is uh, in here in this cabinet. So I have all of the uh, the Apex uh, A3 in here with the uh, dose and all the stuff that I'm dosing into the tank. I told you it was meticulous. I didn't even have to open the door just to see, guys. Just you see this room and some point. <laughs> All the equipment that I've chosen, even the Kessels and the AI blades, can be controlled by the Apex now with this uh, MXM module. Yeah. So, so now I can see everything in one dashboard. With control. Mobius, right? Yeah, yeah, with Mobius. Let's turn on the light here. So underneath the sump. It's actually it's dirtier than usual, but. It's beautiful. Uh, I was at Reef of Palooza this weekend, seeing so everyone. You so got your little know. sticker collections. Too bad I don't have stickers. I'll send you some. Yeah, so these stickers over here, these are dedicated to uh, Elaine from Lazy Coffee Design. She gotcha. does all these little really cool stickers. And then these are from the uh, sticker trading from all the other uh, gotcha. Instagram folks. 
That sticker is huge, man. Yeah, the koi, the... Yeah. <laughs> so, man, everything looks beautiful. So, talk to me about it. So, you got a roller mat? So, I have two SK5000 Clarity roller mats here, and they are installed in this Synergy Reef sump, which is designed specifically to have these just slide right in. Gotcha. And how long do they last you? Ooh, so when you first start out your tank and when your tank water is dirty, they only last maybe a month or two month at the most. Two. But now I probably get a minimum average three months out of these rolls. Gotcha. Before changing them. And the Proton Skimmer, Reef Octopus? That's a Reef Octo Skimmer that I've had for ooh, probably eight, nine years. They're yeah. great, aren't they? Yeah, and they, I never had to change the pump and it's just it just works. It's great protein skimmers overall, I love them. Yeah. And then what do you have there on those two chambers? So I have two reactors here, I have aqua char in one chamber and I have uh, rocks in the other chamber just to polish up the water a little bit. Okay, so carbon basically and another one just to mm -hmm. keep it nice and crystal clear? Yeah, the, the aqua char at this point is not carbon, it's just biological filtration at this point. Got you, and I see you got a bunch of like bio balls type of thing yep. down there. Yeah, so down here is just uh, max spec bio balls down here. This one's a marine pure brick down here. I'm really big into uh, media. I believe that uh, the more media you have, the more uh, bacteria and stable you, your tank is. Yeah, I mean, look how stable. You got stuff spawning everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so what about return pump? What are you using? I see you have two of them. Yep, so over here, I have two redundant uh, CHA return pumps. And so they're plumbed in a way that uh, one or the other could run the system. So if one goes down, one can take over. So if one goes down, all it would just be weaker. Yeah, it would just be a little weaker, and I would just turn this uh, ball oh, valve. Oh, so you got them separated. From, yeah. from where I'm standing right here, you cannot see the orange valve. Oh, yeah. I was like, what did he do here? I'm trying to figure out, now that I see the valve, that makes sense. Yeah. You haven't divided. Yeah. So if one were to fill, you open it, and yep. you can feed both. Turn this on. You can on. redirect and shut off the UV. Is that a UV sterilizer yep. back so there? Yep, so UV sterilizer back there. If uh, this pump goes down, you just close the valve gotcha. and you open this one and then this one runs the returns and the UV temporarily. Gotcha. It'll be weaker, but, yeah. uh, but at least there's... But at least it keeps yeah. them running. Yeah. So you have a little backup plan. Yep. So those are the return pumps. And then uh, I do run a calcium reactor on okay. this tank, but it's on the other side of the wall. So when okay. we, when we go over there, got? we can check that and out. And then can you tell me a little bit about the UV sterilizer? Where it was, what it so is it and what brand? So the UV sterilizer is behind the sump, so you can't see it. It's a Pentair 40-watt uh, okay. um, UV. And that one is super long. It's like 40 inches long. And, so you have uh, to figure out how to fit it back there. So uh, that was the only place where it would fit. It's, it's in line with the return pump, so it doesn't recirculate through. Gotcha. The, so it's, it's, it's more efficient that way. So it goes through the return pumps, through the UV, and then it goes into the tank instead of going back into the sump. Gotcha, and I see you got a Neptune Trident. So the Trident I use for testing, um, it's over in the right, right there. How often do you use it? So it's actually testing eight times a day. Eight times a day? Yeah. So Why I, so much? I, I just have a lot of reagent <laughs> that is expiring in like six months. So I just okay. want to run through them before it. Before okay. it After that, I'll probably go back down to uh, probably just a minimum of two tests per day, the, the, the minimum amount. How about that, maybe twice a week, no? Yeah, yeah. So the, it doesn't allow you to go any lower than twice a day. It, it forces, that's the minimum amount of tests. You lie. Yeah, so there's nothing that you, you, you can't go lower than two times a day. I have, yeah. no, I have no idea on that. Yeah. And it's pretty accurate, you've been happy with it? I've been happy with it. Um, the way I calibrate it is I use a Salifert manual test kit, yeah. and I use that as like my baseline primary numbers. Gotcha. And, I, and I use those numbers to actually calibrate the Trident tube, so the numbers match. That makes sense. Yeah. Kind of like uh, when you have a hydrometer, and you know it's reading 25, but you know in reality it's 23, yeah. you use that value yep. as, <laughs> so you need to be at 27 to be at 25, yeah. you, you calibrate it to your adjustments, you know? So yeah, I, I, I do like that, and I'm, uh, I, I like seeing the numbers match up, because of uh, my OCD. <laughs> gotcha. So that covers all the equipment, covers all the fish. Uh, did we miss anything? Uh, no, just a couple more things here. This valve right here is actually a manual water change, so okay. it's plumbed to a drain. Okay. So I know I said I, I do auto water changes, but if I ever had an issue where I needed to you just drain open the tank, it just drinks it right yeah, out. Yeah, it just drains right room. out. And then I have this third pipe right here that goes to my mixing station, and it fills the. So fills you're the basically, right basically just turn switches on and on instead of carrying buckets and moving around. Yep. 
And That's then this, this line right here is, is, <clears throat> is an outside air line that goes to the skimmer. So it's pulling outside air to help with the pH. Gotcha. Yeah. So a couple more questions. I want to talk about some of your numbers. So salinity, I'm assuming, is 25? Uh, 25, 26. Calcium? Uh, calcium is 420. Okay, magnesium? And then magnesium is uh, 1450. Oh, I community, what are you aim for? I aim for 7.5. Why so low? That's what the Neo Marine mixes to. Um, in, it's in very my low. It, it is low. And then I don't want to buffer the mixing station water, so I just keep it at the same level that the that the salt mixes at. Have so, you tried going a little higher and see what results you I, can get? I, I like running it at 8.5 uh, before, but uh, ever since I did auto water change, uh, I don't want to forget to buffer the... So you rather keep it at that number? I just rather And how long have you been keeping it like that? About a year and a half year at and this half? point, yeah. What about nitrates and phosphates? So nitrates, I want to keep it at around 8 and 10. Okay. And that's, that's like the that's medium, ha the happy part of uh, everybody. And then for phosphates, 0.08 to 0.1. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's borderline going into the big side when you cross the 0.08 yeah, yeah, to the 1. The I like one. to keep it under 0.0 if possible, but... Yeah. Sometimes it's not that easy. I do have an algae scrubber plumped on the other side of the gotcha. wall too, an external one to help with the with the nutrients. All right, so this take care of this tank, and you have a second tank here, yeah, right? So Can we look a, it up? There's okay? another tank over here. So what size tank is this? This is an Innovate Marine 25 gallon lagoon tank, okay. and uh, I dub it the the mushroom tank. Uh, okay, why you have these mushrooms here and not on the mix reef? So the mushrooms require really low flow, lower light, and it's just not a good fit for the uh, display tank where it's a uh, higher flow, higher light. So they don't do very well in that tank. So I've decided, I love mushrooms. Like mushrooms are, are one of my loves. So I decided to do a, a nano tank just full of mushrooms. I see. And you have an anemone, you have a couple of blastomoses in there. What else do you have? So yeah, sun, sunburst anemone uh, there, and it's split into another one there. I have this, uh, there's a story behind this blasto. Uh, it's been what with is me. It? It's been with me. I don't know what it's called, but it's been with me forever. Uh, I got it when it was almost dying. It's like a little pebble. You can barely see it, and then now it's grown into this uh, really cool colony. Man, um, it looks so happy. Uh, other things in here. I have uh, my jawbreaker. I don't know if you guys can see yeah, it from there. Yeah, you can see. You got a jawbreaker island over All there. All the jawbreakers over there growing, and then um, these are. The WWC OG Bounce yeah. uh, right here. And then this guy is crazy. Um, it's like a biohazard OG hybrid bounce. It's kind of changing a little bit. Yeah. That's cool. And then how long have you had those jawbreakers back there? Oh, those are years. Like it keeps on splitting out, spitting out babies. So uh, the, the mother jawbreakers are probably I would say eight, between eight to 10 years old. Oh, so it's yeah. You remember in the beginning when we first got them, they wouldn't grow as fast, fast. Yeah. Jawbreaker mushroom is one of those mushrooms can be in your tank for a year and doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. And then under some weird conditions, like I had them in the sump here because of the high flow before I had this tank. And he lost his mind. It was growing like crazy down there. And then I put them in here and then it kind of slowed down a little bit. I don't know if it's like nutrient levels or maybe traces. Uh, it could be, yeah. you know? So in this tank, I see you got what, two green chromises? Uh, there's two green chromises and uh, just a, a normal clownfish in here. And what is the maintenance on this tank like? This one's also on an auto water change. Is it? <laughs> yeah, so since I ran the lines for this, I went ahead and I ran two lines for this one to go to the mixing stations. So l super low maintenance. The only thing I do to this is uh, top off the auto uh, top off. Gotcha. And then just clean the glass. And I don't even dose anything in the tank. No dosing. Just the auto water chain is replenishing everything it needs. Cool. Yeah. So two more things. Light. Is that the Kessel light? Yep. This is the Kessel AP9X. Okay. How do uh, you like it? This one's perfect for this tank. It, it blankets everything and it's kind of overkill actually for, for a small tank like this. But uh, it's running like 30% intensity right now and that's already 100 par on the bottom. So I see you have a fan there. Yeah, so fan over there and fan over here. So it's incredible how much lower the temperatures get by blowing by water. just oh, having evaporative too, right? cooling. The only issue of that is uh, the ATO, the ev evaporation runs all the so time. So check this out. Yesterday when I was at the show, actually this past weekend, I was in um, at the Tonsi boot, mm -hmm. booth and do you see the new fan oh, yeah. that you pour the water? I yeah. took it home. That's cool. So Tonsi built this new fan that you literally can pour salt water right over and doesn't even flinch. 
That's awesome. So I took it home and slick looking. It's sweet, it it kind of blows across. I the... know you're gonna get one. Yeah. I know you like your gadgets. <laughs> I can tell Peter. Peter like his gadgets. He likes to keep him meticulous. So I'm sure he's gonna get one soon. So anyhow, so you got these two tanks, and then you got a third tank in your garage, and you got some filtration. Yeah. Can so we finish the tour over there. Absolutely. Let's, okay. Let's go check it out. All right. So we're here in your garage. Yep. This is the third tank. It's a frag tank. This is the Deep frag blue. tank. Uh, yep. The blue 80 gallon? Yep, uh, the corner overflow, very old school. <laughs> okay, and what's the purpose of this? So you're growing a lot of euphilia here? Yeah, so this, I use this as kind of like my overflow tank and hospital tank. Yeah. And then also when I'm intaking coral before it hits the display, everything goes here so I can monitor them for pests and making sure, it's not like a full quarantine, but at least it's something for me to visually monitor them for a while before I put them into the display. You got you, and he's got his own sump? It's got its own sump, and then it's also controlled by the apex. Man, you're like a mad scientist here, man. Uh, if, you were, <laughs> if you were to tell me to take care of my tanks, I'd be like, you're gonna have to train me for like a month, buddy, before I can take care of this. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> it's definitely a lot. You know it, because it's simple. You know exactly what everything is. Yeah. But it's like a lot it's going a on. It's controlled chaos, is what I, I like to say. Controlled chaos, huh? Yeah. I like that, the term. So you're big into Kessel Lights. You've been using them for a while? Yeah, when I was uh, in California, Kessel was right down the street. Oh, so, gotcha. So my local hobby store there just was uh, kind of showing off all the Kessel Lights. And when I came in there, I, I loved the shimmer. And then it, I just was hooked. Gotcha. And then what do you have here? So I have 210 gallon reservoirs. This is my mixing station. Okay. And so this is what feeds the uh, auto water change for the two tanks inside. Okay. And it's ran by a Ciche uh, return pump. So that's what's pumping the water from here to the inside if I ever gotcha. want to do like a full water change. And these are fish quarantines right here? So I'm trying to grow Aptasia eating nudies okay. in this tank. It's not easy. It's not easy. And so they don't really eat the big Aptasia. They only like the little ones. Like it's, mm. it's hard. So that one. I think they're keeping the big Aptasia so they keep producing food for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Like yeah, that's, they know. that's pretty smart, right? I um, think that's what's going on. And then this is the invert QT. So when I get okay. new inverts in, because you know, inverts, they perish over time. So I replenish the inverts, yeah. but all the inverts go in here first. And so I scrub their shells. I make sure that they make don't Make sure they're bring... not bringing you up tages yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. He scrubs the shells. You guys hear that? And you got an RO system right here? So this is a RO system with, a, I have this huge chloramine uh, filter that filtrates the uh, chloramines from my water district. So that's, that's a good thing. Always check your water company's water report it will actually tell you the levels of chloramines, chloride in the water so that you can custom, customize your RO system. So, so when you buy like a, a normal four stage, six stage RO yeah. system, it works. Zero TDS doesn't really mean zero TDS. Yeah. It, it may have other stuff in it that you just don't know about. Yeah. So the water report is very helpful. So gotcha. always always look at your, your company's water report and then adjust your RO system accordingly. What is your water coming out here from the tap? The tap comes out at 200 TDS. So about. it's pretty bad. Yeah, so it's pretty yeah, high. We're pretty high too. Yeah, and then um, after, after the RO, it comes down to like four before it hits the the DI. I want to say when I went to New York, I was talking to Andrew, Sandy, yeah. Paul Reeve, and mm -hmm. he's got the best water. Like, he's, I don't remember the numbers, don't hold me on this, but I want to say it's like 30 or 40. I'm like, what? Yeah, like, he can just use it straight out I'm of the I'm like, town. you got to be kidding me. I'm struggling <laughs> here with 2 to 50 in Florida. We get bad water, especially in the summer, you know? Yeah. So, final thing, you got a little bit of filtration over there. Yep. So, over here. So this is what's running the display inside that you guys just saw. Um, so this is a uh, algae scrubber, clear water okay. algae scrubber, okay. helping with the nutrients. I also have another <laughs> ball valve valve out here to push water out. I have a little hook up here just in case I needed to get water. I don't, I, I, I don't want to go all the way around to get water to do, gotcha. if I do want to manual test the parameters. Yeah, you open the valve. Open valve, get some water. Or if you want to give five gallons of water to put some coals you're taking some Exactly, water. yeah, gotcha. so, so I don't have to go around to the front. Um, and then I have the uh, Reef Octo Calcium Reactor uh, right here. Yeah. And that's uh, helping out with the calcium and alk in the tank. And then on this side right here, I have a CO2 scrubber. And the reason why I have that is because, you know, the calcium reactor kind of lowers yeah. the pH a little bit. I want to I wanna keep it at at least 8.3. Okay. So that, that helps with keeping it elevated. Cool. 
So Peter, one thing that I cannot help it to notice is how cool this reef room, this is your office. It's like you got RC collectible cars, you're into like this Legos, Legos and Wars. helmets and, and a little <laughs> bit of everything. So we're gonna show the people, is that cool? Yeah, go for it. Peter, Heck. thank you. Tank looks phenomenal. Thank You're you Mr. So Meticulous. Yep. Uh, you're killing it with the tank. Keep up the good work. Thank you for inviting us over. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, post some comments below. We'll see you guys on the next episode.